we need to be clear. Um, so um, I, think, I think built into a lot of us, kind of in our culture, is this sort of a belief or an attitude that somebody, that whoever it is we're interacting with in our family, they ought to be able to figure out what we need or what we want. And that sometimes basic, frankly, comes out of romantic relationships, where, where like uh, you might say, do I have to tell this man to send me flowers? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, do I need to tell my wife that I need more affection? Do I need, why can't she figure it out? Why can't he figure it out? All of that is completely understandable and completely human, that we want the people in our lives to, to know what it is we want and what we need. But then we have to remember, okay, if your husband or your wife is 38 years old and really having a hard time with that, imagine what it'd be like to be four trying to figure out what the other person needs, or uh, eight or nine or whatever. Um, some of us never learn it, right? And children cannot be expected to be able to figure that out. So we owe it to them to be clear in how we express and articulate what we want from them. Um, and a, war a little bit of a warning about this, uh, and this, will, this can apply certainly by the time a child is six or seven, and it'll go on until they're in their teen, teen years. Um, so here's the dynamic. Let's say you grew up in a household where your mom and dad always said, because I said so. They wouldn't explain to you their rationale, their reasoning. Sometimes where that leads us as parents is, is into a place where we think that we have to explain everything to our kids about what we're doing until they understand us. Children, and this should not be held against them, it's <laughs> just what they do, children will exploit that. If they figure out that you need for them to understand why you're doing what you're doing, then they're gonna play this game. You're gonna say, honey, you can't go to this party, here's why you can't go to this party. And they're gonna say, I don't understand. And then you're gonna say, well, let me explain it to you again. They say, I don't really understand. Trust me, they understand. That, that I don't understand thing is a tactic. And the tactic is, I'm gonna keep you, I know you need for me to get this, so I'm gonna keep you off balance and explain it to me till you reach the point where you say, I don't care what the hell you do, just go do it, I don't care anymore. Right? <laughs> but the thing is to, is to wear you down so you just surrender, right? So you don't fall for it. So the compromise technique is, I think, respectfully, we owe our ch children an explanation for why we do important things that have to do with parenting. But here's how you do it. I'm going to model it for you. You say, look at me because I'm about to tell you why I've made this decision that you can't go to this party. And you explain it. And you say, let me hear you tell me what you're hearing me say. And you say, well, you're saying that I'm not old enough and it's not whatever it is. You say, great. Do you have anything you'd like to say about that? Uh, I don't know, I don't think it's right. Okay, you have anything else to say? Uh, no. Okay, we're done. And then you're done. And then if they start chasing you around the house, trying to re-engage you <laughs> in this argument about it, you say, no, we are done. And then that behavior of harassing you, <laughs> then you get to deal with as a disciplinary problem. I told you to stop ha hassling me, you're hassling me, so therefore you're grounded. Everybody get that? So yes, the compromise is, sure, it's a respectful thing to do to explain to kids why we make the decisions, but not get into that cycle of, I don't understand, let me explain it again. If they know we're desperate to have them understand, they'll wedge themselves right in that and exploit it, <laughs> exploit it every time, okay? So we need to be clear and, uh, uh, in the way we communicate. And that in, it often involves making sure we don't talk to the back of a child's head on the way through the room, but we really engage them in conversation so they can hear what we're saying. Thanks for your patience on that. Here's another principle. And you know, this is right out of Psych 101, and like most things out of Psych 101, we ignore this all the time. The, the lot of research on this idea of responding to positive behavior. Another way of putting this is a lot of research on how American parents balance, going back to the seesaw, um, 
positive reinforcement, for lack of a better word, I'm not crazy about the word, versus punishment. And what the research tells us is that parents tend to overpunish and not do enough of positive reinforcement. Now quickly, it's important to know that positive reinforcement doesn't mean that every time your child does something good that you got to run them down to the ice cream store or, or take them to Smith's. It doesn't mean that. What it does mean is that we need to make more of a discipline out of saying to our kids, wow, great job. Sometimes we have to say, hey, thank you so much for staying on my hair today, right? That, you know, it's almost like a variation of, appreciate you not being a jerk today. That's probably not the way to do it. But we, the, the research is abundant that we don't acknowledge and pay attention to positive behavior as much as we should. It's the most human thing in the world. I, my first job in, in Birmingham was I worked at Children's Hospital, and I ran the psychology department when Children's was a much smaller place. And I was a busy, busy guy. Uh, you know, like most hospital doctors, I was really busy. So when I would get home, if my children were just kind of quietly playing someplace and not bugging me, my natural tendency was to say, oh, thank goodness I got a few minutes to read the newspaper in peace. This is back when we had a newspaper in Birmingham. You know, what I had to learn to do, though, and then th if I came home and they were fighting, then they would definitely get my attention. So I had to make a discipline out of saying, hey, you guys come here. They come over and say, thank you so much. It's really awesome to see you guys playing together. Just, again, not a trip to the ice cream shop, just acknowledgement. Most children respond very well to that kind of low-key, respectful acknowledgement of them doing well. And we neglect that. And, I, and I, it's perfectly understandable because we're so busy, it's perfectly human to neglect it. It just shouldn't be confused as something that's going to help our kids, that we, it doesn't help them, you know. So that's a big thing I think we all have to work through as best we can. A lot of times, the kind of rewards kid need, you know, so-called rewards reinforcement is just this kind of thing, you know, that little bit of extra time, a little bit of individual time, and um, all these things are difficult for us sometimes because we're all so busy. But this is a kind of moment that can be incredibly reinforcing to kids, uh, and we just have to find a way to make that happen. Something else we probably ought to think about doing is trying not to inadvertently reward bad behavior. So uh, let's say, let's take this scenario. Let's say you've got a four-year-old and you're in the line to check out at Publix and Junior spots, you know, an awesome looking piece of crystallized candy over here. I want that. Well, you can't have that today. I want that. Well, you can't have that. And Junior starts to just pitch a hissy fit. Anybody been there? It's a trick question. <laughs> so, um, woe be it to the parent who makes a habit of saying, okay, okay. All right. If, uh, here's another thing. If children know that you have a capacity for public embarrassment, <laughs> I'm going to pitch a hissy fit because mom will close this down quick. She can't deal, right? So we have to be willing to ride those things out. And think about it. This is not calculus. If we make a pattern of doing this, what's the message we communicate? The message is, if I pitch a fit that's long enough and loud enough, I'll get my way. I don't know if that's been your experience as adults, but my experience as an adult is that that doesn't work. At, at my current job, or the, when I worked for Dickie Barlow, pitching a fit just didn't seem to have that much impact on Dr. Barlow. So that's not a lesson, you know, that we need to be teaching our kids. So we have to be careful about that and think about it, you know. When do we do that without realizing it? I've already mentioned the fact that we may punish too much and fuss too much. Um, that's just a case of me getting ahead of my own slides. So, all, right. all right, let's talk about physical punishment. And I have really two purposes for talking about this. I want to briefly tell you why I think we should not use physical punishment. And then I also want to use it as an example of thinking of these things in terms of principles. Okay, so here's the short version of why we need to stop spanking. The, the, the research on this is incredibly abundant and could not be clearer, the research. 
Now, frankly, we live in a time when nobody cares anymore about research. Nobody cares about the data. They care about their gut, all right? So um, the research tells us that at best, spanking will change behavior for a little while. By that, I mean minutes or hours after we do it. So if your kid is jumping up and down doing something obnoxious and you spank them, yeah, it'll stop that behavior, but there's no evidence it'll change their behavior tomorrow, all right? Even if you do this daily, it doesn't mean there's no evidence that physical punishment works. They're just not. Um, furthermore, there's no shortage of evidence that we just now are learning. You know, we get smarter in time as we learn more about kids. There's more and more evidence that it is harmful to children. And it's above and beyond the scope of this conversation to talk about that, but I'm just telling you. The American Academy of Pediatrics has come out on this, and they just don't take a position unless they've got a lot of data to back it up. Um, I, there's a whole lot more I could say about spanking in, in general. Here's my favorite thing, though. Dr. Wisely, I know spanking work because my daddy spanked me every day, and I turned out fine. And I'm always tempted to say, yeah, I know you. I'm not sure you did. Right? <laughs> um, but really, a more serious thing is, None of us have any way of knowing how we would have turned out if our parents hadn't spanked us. <laughs> Another one I get is, I think if I wasn't spanked, I'd be in prison. And I think, go visit your local prison and find out what the rates there of those kids being spanked or hit when they were children. And they're going to be astronomically higher than they are in the general population. So anyway, I want to stop making that argument. Because here's what I really want to say. Let's say you decide you want to make your decisions about parenting based on principle. So here's my challenge to you. What's the principle you're trying to uphold when you hit a child and cause them physical pain? You might say, I want them to learn that if you make mistakes, it hurts. Well, if I make a mistake, it hurts, but it doesn't make my butt hurt. It doesn't make, cause me physical pain. No one strikes me. What I've learned is if I make a boneheaded mistake, there's just going to be natural consequences I'm going to have to deal with. I'm not going to learn anything. If I make a mistake at work, I'm not going to learn anything if somebody punches me, right? So you might say, spare the rod and spoil the child. And I, by the way, which I always like, since I work for a church now, I can say this. By the way, it does not appear in Proverbs. Everybody thinks it's just not there. There are some things, though, that, like... Um, a friend, I had an argument like this. A friend of mine says, I take it all literally. It says in there, uh, if you spare the rod, you hate your child. I said, do you really take it literally? Yes, I take it literally. Well, get thee then to the Home Depot to acquire the rod, because whatever it is you're using is not literal. And also, I never spank my daughters. So if I take this literally, you're telling me that I hate my daughters, and them's fighting words, all right? So I just ask you, what is the principle that you would be upholding if you hit your child? And the last thing I'll say about this, I just think it's time in 2020 to stop hitting children. They're the la By the way, the last people in the United States you're legally allowed to strike. You can't hit your spouse. You can't hit your boss. You can't hear, hit a stranger in a bar. There's no place and nobody else you're allowed to hit and cause physical pain other than children. I said I was going to shut up. I can't. One more thing. I'm haunted by this story to this day. Uh, the back preface on this is, the, the younger the child is, the more they live and breathe their relationship with their parent, being loved and accepted by their parent. They, that's so critical to them, I don't think any of us anymore can remember how much that's critical. That's all it is, being loved and cared for and supported. So years ago, I was in a shopping mall. Here's how long ago, it was Century Plaza Mall. It must have been 1885 or something. <laughs> and there was a, a child, maybe 18 months or two years old, on the floor crying, just crying, crying, crying. His mother starts to walk toward him, I could tell. And she's got this blank look on her face and she's walking toward the child and he holds up his arms like this, 
and instead of taking him, she slapped him like this across the side of the head and just kept walking. And that child turned around and looked in my direction, and I, I still am haunted by it. This look of just, just devastation. And so just, is it hard to imagine that when a child is three years old, not capable of understanding what you're trying to do when you hit them, that they would just see that as just betrayal is not even the right word for it. Just kicks everything out of the foundations that are so important to it.